get started, folks. Have a seat. Have a seat. so many that may be speaking tonight. Um, okay, let's go ahead and start the meeting April 2nd, um, 2012, 7 p.m. And we'll start off with invocation of Mr. Lyman Whitehead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this great country we live in. We ask that you guide and direct us to make it even greater. We ask you to bless the people that are here tonight that are involved. We ask that you be with us that wanted to be here and couldn't. We ask that you especially be with our military, especially those in harm's way, be with the families that are left back home to make things go while they're gone. We ask that you especially be with our Supreme Court and their rulings to be coming up. This is a major, major thing in the future of this great country we live in. We especially ask that you guide and direct us to get back to Judeo-Christian constitutional living and elect candidates of that year. And we ask that you bless us all through the coming days and bless us for this meeting, help us to go forth, and rally together, and keep this great election of candidate in the great state of South Carolina and the great United States of America together. These and all our many, many blessings we ask in our great Son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now, Bill Rentier's going to read the The Republican Creed. I do not choose to be a common man. It is my right to be uncommon. If I can seek opportunity and not security, I want to take the calculated risk to dream and to build. To fail and to succeed, I refuse to barter incentive for dole. I prefer the challenges of life to guaranteed security, the thrill of fulfillment to the state of calm utopia. I will not trade freedom for beneficence nor my dignity for a handout. I will never cower before any master save my God. It is my heritage to stand erect, proud, and unafraid, to think and act for myself, enjoy the benefit of my creations, to face the whole world boldly and say, I am a free American. Thank you, Bill. Well, I was just informed as, uh, as of now, we only have 18 uh, precincts represented, so we don't have enough for a quorum. Um, <coughs> if some more come in, we'll, we'll reevaluate that. Uh, next, we have recognition of candidate filing volunteers in the hosting facility. And let me tell you, folks, we had 44 candidates file for office this last couple of weeks. Set a record. <laughs> You know, words and actions match, and I want to recognize Mickey Lindler for putting all the time and effort into making this happen. She organized it, did a great job. Mickey, stand up, give, give her a round of applause. <laughs> Next, we'd like to, Mickey, come on up, we'd like to recognize all the folks that helped uh, make this successful. All the officers, 
some of, of whom aren't here tonight. Uh, the second vice chair and third vice chair aren't here, but they were there. All of them were there to help make this happen. So uh, as your name is called, please come up and, and maybe if you will pass those out and I'll, I'll call them out. Pat, the very old Pat, are you here tonight? I didn't see her. If not, we'll hold those. Uh, Carla, did you go down and accept yours? Carla Hardy did an excellent job. She was there almost every day. And this was at Shoney's, and Chad Conley, it was his idea to have to use a restaurant. And it, it was a neutral location, and it worked out well. Plus, the coffee was good. <laughs> Tommy Plum. Back, sir. Okay, okay. Age is catching up with all of us. That's all I can say. Nikki, can you make it, or you may come in? Summer Solo. Summer keep keeps correcting these. Look, solar, summer solar. Uh, Ned's not with us, so we'll give Ned's to him uh, extemporaneously or ex post facto. <laughs> Jim Well. Jim. Uh, let's see, Terry Stark is not with us, the third vice chair. Now yeah, I've got to give this one out. Yeah. Treasurer's report. Um, and I also want to mention that we have Wilma Story is going to be our chairman of the audit committee, which is required by party rules. Wilma, where are you out there? Would you stand up? Wilma Story. Let's give Wilma a hand of yearly, This audit, this ex it's like an external audit, this audit committee uh, is required. It hasn't happened for several years. So this is something. And I also have tried to put all the financial data online that I could put online. So you can see what's happening. So Jim is going to be with us until the tenth. Uh, Jim, you'll say a few things before we go to go back to jail or. Trip, trip. Well, right, because, um, you know, Mason is kind of nervous when you tell him the audit committee is. Um, anyway, I appreciate the opportunity to have you serve. I think it's been eight years off and on, and uh, it's been an interesting trip. And I appreciate it. I've made some very good friends. And. Uh, <coughs> I'm not going to go away. I just need to break for a while. So thank you for the opportunity to serve as your treasurer for all these years. Let's get that round of applause. Jim just said because he just volunteered for another committee. He's now a member of the RAC committee. Take Robert Schaefer's position. 
So in other words, you're shocked when you hear that, but he did volunteer for that. Anyway, my last report, uh, back there you can see where we are. The month of March and the year to date, you see we took in 58805 in uh, Canada filing fee, pay those out to the state. So if there are any questions, I'll be glad to answer them, but if not, uh, that's where we are as of March 31st. Thank you. Mr. Treasurer, do, do I understand correctly, we only have $280 in the bank? Is that yeah. right? Yeah, the rest is in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean anything offensive by that. I would yeah, ask you, to do it. We only have $280 then. Okay. okay. To ask for Mr. Green's, we, we had a net activity for the month of March for $280.26. We have a year to date bank balance of $7,240.23. Does that answer your question, Mike? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, Mike. Always excellent questions for Mike. <laughs> it was your today. So. <laughs> okay. If there's no objection, the treasurer's report will be approved as submitted. Um, approval of minutes. March Executive Committee meeting uh, minutes by Carla Hardy. All of you received those. Um, if there's no corrections, additions, or deletions, the minutes will be approved as submitted. Officer's report. Uh, Tommy Plonk is going to mention two, two items, the Silver Elephant briefly and the April 21st District Convention. Tom? Yeah, we have uh, actually two conventions coming up and the Silver Elephant Banquet. Uh, the, first, first, uh, ban the first convention is our state, uh, our U.S. House District uh, Convention, April 21st. That means all the counties in our U.S. House District, where our district goes into the county, will meet for a convention. And if you were a uh, delegate or alternate to the state convention, then you can go to this convention. So you should have gotten a uh, call to convention. If not, please let me know or Tony uh, Denny, who's the president of the convention. And that has all the information. It'll be Saturday, April 21st at the... Uh, State Museum, there's a big auditorium there, and if you attend, you get a free ticket to the museum for the rest of the day. Uh, the other, the other uh, convention is the State Convention, May uh, 19th, and information on it is at the uh, State website for events, which is a nice new website that's been set up uh, just to give, provide information for events and to provide a way to buy tickets and so forth if you want to go. That website is scgop2012.com and has all the information uh, about, those, about those events. And, and the, uh, the uh, Silver Elephant Banquet will come about the evening of the state convention and rather than the evening before as we had been uh, advertising and Marco Rubio will be speaking you can go to the same website about uh, tickets and there's a little bit of discussion about how tickets are going to be handled so um, if you want to wait a week or two before you sign up uh, you, you, you might save yourself a little trouble but it will be an outstanding banquet uh, people will be clamoring to hear Marco Rubio, and so I hope that you can uh, hope that you can make it. If you aren't going to the um, district convention, if you're if you're a delegate, um, not concerned about alternates, but if you're a, de a delegate, if you're a state delegate, and not going to the district convention, if you could go ahead and let me know, then we'll be able to s sift on down into the alternates quicker. If we know. Uh, 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 some of the people who are not going to be there. And uh, our own Randy Page is going to run at that convention for president of the uh, district convention, and that will cover the next four years. That, that convention only meets every four years, and Randy Page is going to run for uh, president. Tony Denny will not be running this time. So I'll take questions after, after the meeting or now if there are any questions. For, for Tom. Is Randy still here? Randy, did you leave? 
Randy, stand up, sir, if I can see you. Randy. Randy, thanks, thanks for running to represent. <laughs> Number 10, um, we have a point. At the last steering committee, I created a new, a new committee called the uh, Precinct Reorganization Committee. The chairman of that committee is Lee Candidate. Lee, would you stand up? Uh, Lee's uh, primary goal is to reorganize the unorganized precincts. We have several of those. And he'll help. He's also looking for other people to work with. So if you're interested in reorganization, especially in unorganized precinct areas, speak with Lee Candidate. Uh, old business. All right, since there's no old business, let's, let's move to new business. Uh, any new business? Hang on, baby. Let's, let's contemplate this. It's more of an announcement, right? Okay. Let's just make it under announcements. Okay. All right. Uh, announcements. I know, Carla, you got something you want to talk about under announcements? I just want to remind everyone that tomorrow is First Tuesday Republican Club of Richland Lexington Counties. Um, um, it meets at, it, we, we um, start taking the money and everything at noon and the meeting is going to begin probably at 12.45 tomorrow. Um, we um, will have the candidates for District 18 and also the clerk of court's office and we have a change of venue for tomorrow um Seawolf was not able to put us in this month so we will be at brooklyn baptist church in west columbia on sunset boulevard um any of you who are interested in coming you're welcome to come it's fifteen dollars <coughs> candidate, candidate filing now mickey has one minute you got the timer off all right, Mickey, go ahead. Go ahead, Mickey. Candidate file. Go ahead. Membership. Candidate file. Can you get up? Okay, everybody up through Thursday is on this board. If your name's not on here, fill out a form. We really would, so many of you give up your time and your talents, and our only fundraiser is membership. And sustaining is $24. If you'd like to give us a check or mail a check, um, fill this out. But if your name's not on this board, fill out a form. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, Mickey, that was good. I, I want you to say a couple of things about about filing. How did this year's filing go in comparison to other years? Because you, you were totally in charge of this the last few years. Tell um, us about that. I had some mental <coughs> These people who volunteered their time at Shoney's, we gave them either a bunch of money or they gave them a bunch of money. Um, some didn't take advantage of it, but some did. Um, the filing went. Very smoothly, I was so optimistic I did 75 packs and only 44 files. But the, um, the venue was great, the meal was great. Um, we didn't have any trouble with the filing, everybody did their um, forms correctly. And um, <coughs> Carla was co chair, and Tommy and Summer jumped in the last day, and we were able to meet the deadline by two hours at state headquarters and at the county so thank you so very much and terry just came in so he's going to please give her a hand she just built in great <laughs> okay thank you mickey that was very good all right, now we have, uh, as of a few minutes ago, 18 precincts. We're about to come up to something that could be a voted bomb. Uh, we had a couple of people may have come in late. We've got to have at least 25 to have a quorum. Um, I got one um, proxy. Mr. Chairman, I think we had But I don't know if there's anybody else. Plus the proxy. So I think we had five. <laughs> Uh, Mike, would, would somebody repeat that? I think we had five join us. Okay. Um, I'm not 100% positive that they were all different precincts, but I believe they were. Okay. All right. Yes. Let's, let's, uh, if, if you're executive committeeman with a precinct, would you just stand? Let's count the number of executive committeemen. Let's count. Some of them may not have signed in. Right. 
it was a disaster, the regulations and all that we had to comply with. All I can say is, my pledge is, I am there for the young people. We have kids lost in the woods. <coughs> they have no future. They have no place to look, no job to go to. My pledge is, I will only take a salary of $38,000. I will stay only four years. Y'all talk about, let's have term limitations. I'll give you my term limitations. Four years, max. I will stay with my insurance program, okay? I will stay with my retirement program, because I'm an individual. I shouldn't have uh, special privileges just because I'm in Congress. And the last thing is, there will be a sign, no lobbyist allowed in this office. I will talk to any company executive. I'll talk to anybody who is a company employee, mm -hmm. but I will not be bribed by lobbyists. That's my statement. It took less than two minutes. I'm here if you'll just give me the opportunity. If you will look at my website, Bill Black Bar Congress. I'm a renegade. I'm not afraid of the establishment. And somebody has got to do something. And if you'll give me the opportunity, I will prove it. Thank you. It's, it's just great to be back with you, and you need to know how important it is for me to be here. Uh, it's invigorating to be with you, uh, because in Washington, uh, it's a disconnect. Uh, it, it really is uh, uh, a situation of uh, where I am working in a parallel universe uh, of people who simply do not understand uh, the uh, challenges we face. And so it's great to be with you. As I was coming, I was um, with uh, Alex Morris, and I was saying, Alex, you need to be aware uh, that you're marrying into the Livingston family. He's engaged to Rebecca Livingston. And I said that the very first uh, executive committee meeting I went to uh, 42 years ago uh, was in um, the Livingston Agency on State Street. There, uh, it was a former service station, and all eight or nine of us uh, who were active in the party at that time uh, got together. And so, Steve, I want to congratulate all of you uh, for maintaining a tradition of having an open meeting, getting people involved. Uh, and so, uh, and, and to hear about the filings, uh, there was a reason I helped lead the clap in the back uh, for 44 people running. That's important. That's how we uh, grow our philosophy of limited government expanded freedom. I'm very grateful in this campaign. Uh, I've got a, a top notch fellow, Alex Morris. If Alex will stand up, uh, he's a, um, a Citadel graduate. Uh, he, act, he was active uh, in the Tim Scott campaign, the Mick Malvaney campaign. Uh, and he's uh, going to be a uh, campaign manager. I take nothing for granted. I enjoy campaigning, as you well know. And I look forward to a, a positive message. Uh, the message I have is working to create jobs uh, in the second district, to reduce spending in Washington, uh, obviously stop tax increases, and work for a strong national defense. I want to invite all of you on uh, Thursday morning at the uh, Chamber of Commerce, uh, 8 to 10 in the morning, we'll be discussing uh, the issue of strong national defense. Look forward to a positive campaign. Um, congratulations on everyone's success here. Thank you. Senate District 25, which includes Lexington, Aiken, Edgefield, McCormick, and Saluda counties. We have eight precincts in Lexington County, about uh, 20,000 people. So this is a, it's a very important part of the district, and I look forward to getting to know each and every one of you that are in that district, and also those of you who are not. I've got a couple claims to fame in here. One was uh, Joe Wilson, as I'm proud to follow him, 1976. 36 years ago, I was his youth chairman in Edgefield County. Uh, now, I'm not older than Joe, I'm younger. I'm in, I was in high school then. I was a senior, senior in high school, but I was his youth chairman. And then uh, Chip Huggins back there asked me, John, tell us what your claim to fame is. I said, well, I knew your wife before you did. So, uh, but she wouldn't go out with me, so uh, uh, he, he was lucky to marry Ginger. But, 
just briefly, uh, growing up, uh, my parents taught me a number of things that have stayed with me. Uh, to use common sense, to be careful how you spend your money, uh, that a man's word is his bond, and to trust in the Lord. And if I'm elected, I'll take those core values with me to Columbia, along with the principles of less government and more individual responsibility. And as we consider each piece of legislation and each decision, those principles will guide me. And, you know, this district is very important, uh, and we have a lot of work to do in South Carolina. I love South Carolina. It's a great state, but we have a lot of work to do. A lot of, a lot of good legislation gets passed in the House, but it gets bogged down in the Senate. So I want to see if we can keep that moving along, send it to the governor, and have it enacted in the law. Look forward to meeting each and every one of you. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Dee Dee Vaughters. I think I've met most of you in the room by now. I am candidate for Senate District 26, which is Aiken County, Lexington County, Saluda, and Calhoun. So another gerrymandered district held by the last remaining Democrat in Lexington County, and it's time to go. 36 years is entirely too long. I'll tell you why I'm in the race, because I think that's the first question everyone should ask every candidate. Why are you in the race and what qualifies you? I am in the race because in 2005, I received a property tax bill for the light fixtures in my office. And as a small business owner, I decided then and there that government had lost its mind. It no longer was looking out for the business owner. It was no longer looking out for the taxpayer. Think about that. Property tax for the light fixtures in your office. That is absolutely absurd. I became a grassroots activist that day. I have fought for the taxpayers. I have fought for small business owners as a grassroots activist. I joined the Policy Council board and became vice chairman, and I have traveled the state fighting for those beliefs that we have here in the Republican Party. Those beliefs where we are free, this is free market capitalism, and where we have less taxes and less government regulation crossing the state on my own dime to do so. Why am I in the race? Because I was gerrymandered into Nikki Setzler's district and I said, absolutely not. You deserve better, I deserve better. I appreciate your support. I'll stay till the end because I always do. There are no time for questions now, but I will answer anything on the record about myself personally or politically. And I hope to gain your trust and your vote. Thank you. everyone. My name is Dwayne Knockin and I'm running for State Senate District 26. A um, little bit about myself. I've never run for political office before. I'm a small businessman. I have a granite countertop company. So if any of you need countertops, you know who to come see after the meeting as well. Um, married my wife Heather about six years ago. She's from the Florence area. I uh, have a two and a half year old son, Mason. And he is really one of the big reasons why I decided I needed to get involved. We all see where our country's going, and most of us don't like where that is. We are overtaxed, our government spent too much money, we are accumulating phenomenal amounts of debt. Um, because of that, I felt the need that I had to get involved in this process. A little bit more about me, my company is Stone Interiors. Uh, I've been building that company for about 10 years. I started it back in 2001. 
I took that from being one person on day one myself to over 150 employees in four states uh, doing uh, servicing customers in over nine states. So I've worked in a lot of areas. I've seen some of the good and the bad and everything else that local and state governments and federal governments have to throw at small businesses. I'm pretty good at dealing with those things. We've been able to have a successful business. My industry has selected me to teach other businesses in our industry how to be more efficient, how to cut their costs and manage those things. I want to take that experience forward to the state house. I want to be able to go there, start tearing apart every agency's budget, looking at what they're doing right, what they're doing wrong, finding where we can come up with savings. Ten seconds, all right. Um, I'll be here after the meeting. Other big issues I have out there, school choice, property taxes. Uh, I know Dee Dee mentioned them, but Property taxes, in my opinion, cause us all to truly be renters at the behest of the government. So speak with me after the meeting. I'll be here all night as well. Uh, thank you for your time. It was actually the first place I spoke. As many of you know my story, I uh, came back from overseas and seeing the wonderful thing our young men and women are doing. Spoke at the first tea party. Yeah, and announced for camp. Speak up, get the mic. Okay. Can you all hear me back? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to talk real quick, get this over with. Um, Katrina was a hero of mine. She's one of the reasons I ran for office because it, it was tough, one of the toughest things I've done. But I thought about what she did in 2008. She jumped in head first, so I jumped in head first too. She is a small government individual, conservative to the core. She's also Christian. And frankly, we need to shake up the Senate right now. All of us know that. Know that. It's one of the things I came in to do was help shake things up and uh, help bring the uh, values that many of the Tea Party wanted to bring, which was limited government, true adherence to the Constitution, and what our founders wanted, which we put our faith in God, not government. Katrina is that person. I, I believe in her. She's a small business person, a mother, grandmother. She will make changes in the Senate and set changes that need to be made, and we all know. So with that, I'm actually finishing close in two minutes. That's, that's wonderful. Thank you for your time. It's great to be here, and I'm heading back to Warrenburg. So I'll see you. Thank you. <laughs> I'd like to uh, ask all the remaining speakers to go to the microphone so everyone can be heard equally, so to speak, just if you don't mind, and so the recording picked up properly. So who's the next speaker? Okay, Senate District 18, Alan Hunter, are you here? Kara Gormley Meadow. Um, we'll hear first then for, from Douglas Ford on behalf of our call. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Senator Cromer apologizes for not being here. He had some minor surgery last week and still recovering from that, uh, but we expect him to be back up to full strength by the end of the week. But uh, I just want to tell you a little bit about uh, Senator Cromer and uh, let you know why um, why he's in the race. Uh, as many of you know, he grew up uh, right here in District 18, and he uh, he's a long, lifelong resident of Senate District 18. He went to Mid Carolina High School, graduated from USC, had got his degree in pharmacy, and when he got through the pharmacy school, he went back to Prosperity and started working for a local pharmacist there. Saved up enough money, was able to start his own pharmacy, and he still owns a pharmacy now in Prosperity. In 2012, Senator Cromer introduced several bills that I think uh, everyone in this room uh, would be happy to support. Uh, first was the immigration bill. It was an Arizona-style immigration bill. Most of that bill was adopted into what finally became law. He also introduced the uh, 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 Accurate uh, Expenses Act, which, or, or introduced that, I should say, which means that uh, legislators must get reimbursed on their actual expenses. They don't get a set per diem or housing fee they, if they have to turn in uh, actual receipts for that. Now, the other thing that he introduced was uh, the um, value-based budgeting bill. 
The value-based budgeting bill means that every five to seven years, every agency and every budget would be reviewed, and they would go through and make sure they were operating on their mission and within their budget and making sure they, wouldn't have, they weren't having mission creep or that they weren't inefficiently using the money that the state was giving them. Uh, Senator Cromer is very much supporting uh, limited government. He has voted for transparency at every opportunity. He actually introduced the Senate version of the Spending Accountability Act, uh, which is the roll call voting. And he is uh, also uh, supporting the um, uh, all the other uh, transparency initiatives, uh, including the um, um, well, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, I mentioned the uh, uh, Spending, uh, Spending Accountability Act. Uh, but uh, if you have any questions about Senator Cromer, uh, please uh, stop by and ask me or Mark Noop, who is here, uh, to uh, any questions you have at <coughs> RonnieCromer.com. Thank you. Thank you. I guess y'all, uh, hopefully y'all remember me. It's uh, good to be in front of the podium again. Um, I just want to tell you, the reason I'm running is because I'm tired of yelling at my TV and feeling like it's things are out of control. So I want to uh, go up or down or over to Columbia and try to get a lot less government in our lives. I just want less concern about what Columbia and Washington thinks about every decision I make. And there is way too much interference with us. We got to ask the, who, all right, well, we, we've got this new bill that they're introducing about cutting our lawn. We all know that lovely thought. The government's going to tell us how high our lawn should be. They're going to tell us what kind of light bulbs to use, how much water we can use when we flush the toilet, um, how fast the water can come out of our shower. And I mean, it's just micromanaging. We need to get rid of that. I believe we'd all be much better if we were freer. I also want to take this opportunity to uh, invite you all, there's cards being passed around to my kickoff event tomorrow at Hudson's Barbecue. And uh, barbecue's on me, and uh, you're not obligated to vote for me, but I'd love to have you come out and, and join us. And uh, if any of you have any questions, feel free to call me. My cell number is 513-5275. Prob probably most of you already have that from emails you've gotten from me in the past. And I'll be happy to talk to you about whatever subject you want to talk about. But thank you all, have a great night. as an opportunity to have two announcements. Uh, the first announcement is that I am resigning from my position as Northern District Chair of the Lexington County Republican Party, um, and also from the uh, RAC Committee, because I filed to run uh, for District 6 in Lexington County. The reason I am running is because I believe in absolute private property rights that come from God. I also believe that instead of going to foreign lands like Washington State or Orlando, Florida, to recruit businesses to come to South Carolina. We should be creating a better environment here in South Carolina, especially in Lexington County, for businesses, local businesses, to thrive. Why, why recruit the next multinational corporation to come in when we can grow them here in South Carolina? And I, I'm sure most people in this room know that across the river over there in that other county, they're not doing the right thing. So we need to create a place here in Lexington County for those people to come whenever they want to do, do business and be left alone. We need to reduce taxes, we need to uh, reduce regulations, and, and stop interfering with everyone's life unless they're harming someone else. I am originally from Florence, South Carolina. I'm a graduate of Clemson University. I'm a software engineer. I have three daughters, and I homeschool my children, and I'm also a very big supporter of, of uh, private schools and uh, homeschooling. My website is Norris, like Chuck, for council.com. And my uh, email address is Corey at NARSforCouncil.com. If you have questions, I'll be around afterwards. Thank you.
thank y'all for being here. Uh, my name's Bobby Keith. They call me the Brave Digger, so if you ever need my service, let me know what they did. But uh, anyway, I've uh, been in office nine, nine and a half years. Uh, I think I've been very conservative since I've been in office uh, with taxes and all, and I'm not here to support any big taxes. I uh, think we need to keep our taxes at a lower level. Uh, also, we have lots of ordinance that I don't really believe in all of them. I think we need to back off of some of them. I do think we put too much pressure on the people. Uh, I do have some issues with the property tax for business. I think we need to work with them. Less people that have house rentals and affect some other people. Uh, it's not fair. You know, time is hard. You know, we in this recycle thing here, and we need to look out for these people. And I'm a big supporter of supporting everyone. Um, I'm there if you need my service, I'll be happy. I'm a, a very commitment person. If I make a commitment, I honor it, and I always expect that on the other side. And people call me with a complaint. Nine times out of 10 in my houses or homes, I go talk to these people and find out what their issues are. And you know, I found out it's always two sides of every story. I may sit there and listen to your side, the other side will be different. But I'm a firm believer in getting you and the other department head and me and we all say it. And that just works out better for everybody. And, and I'm just a firm believer in communication and that's what we need. And I appreciate the support and um, call me anytime you wish. Thank you. Good evening, and I really appreciate the opportunity to come before you tonight. Um, it is very exciting for me to have the opportunity to once again put my name in the hat to serve the people of District 4. Um, I've been in Lexington County for 30 years. I have three children. All are adults, and I'll have chosen to stay in Lexington County. And that is truly my reason. Eight years ago, when I first ran for county council, I had never held any sort of elected office other than something at a school, like a PTA president. So it was a big, um, big leap of faith for me um, to seek um, the vote of the people. And I worked really hard by walking those neighborhoods, which I look forward to doing again. Um, the people of Lexington County are conservative. They desire, as everyone has said and will continue to say, we want less government. We don't need um, government down our necks all the time. But I will tell you that it's been a real eye-opener for me serving on county council because I've also learned that it is a, a, little, a little more <coughs> difficult to make everyone happy. And we get calls of all kinds from our citizens. I attend on a monthly basis homeowners association meetings, community club meetings, Ruritan, Lion Clubs, wherever I'm asked to come and speak, and I love it because it gives me an opportunity. I've met some of the finest people in Lexington County. We have a mission in Lexington County, and that is to provide um, opportunities to all of our communities and to provide that in a quality manner. And that, that covers a lot. It's, it, it seems very generic, but it has to be because we serve some 240,000 people, and, we, and I represent them all. I'm from District 4, and I'm there for those people to call me about any kind of problem that they might have. But I make decisions for Batesburg <coughs> Leesville, for Chapin, for Pillion. I have to make decisions for all of those areas, so any of those people can call me at any time. I really appreciate the honor and the privilege to serve you, and I look forward to um, your, your support during this time. Thank you so much. First 
of all, I'm not a politician, so I need to buy me a suit, I guess. I'm running for this office because I heard the Republican creed. I've never heard it before, and that's why I'm running. I was born in North Carolina. I moved here at nine months, been here 55 years. Raised four kids, two grandkids, business owner. The Hudson family has created hundreds of jobs in Lexington County. And I'm worried about Lexington County. I love Lexington County. That's why I'm running for this office. I think if you should support and run for this office, you should be from Lexington County. You should be a small business owner or a business owner, created job. I know what it's like to make payroll. I think all the candidates that I'm against, I've looked at their bio, we're all the same. Every Republican says the same. Smaller government. Small, all that stuff is, I feel the same way. But who can make it happen? Who has made it happen? Look at my background. It all boils down to the best candidate and they're great guys. But I have created jobs. My family's created jobs. I have 55 vested years of interest in this job. And I'm worried about my grandkids. I'm worried about my kids. And I love Lexington County. And someone said earlier, that they're passionate about their job. I'm passionate about everything I do. When I finally decide to do it, I won't do it for 10 years. My kids are grown now. I can focus on Lexington County. And I think it's the greatest place in the world to live. And I think that we all should feel that way. But we got to support small business. Small business creates more job than all the big businesses combined. And I think all the funnel of money going to big business is great. But how about incentives for small business? We have to hire people, local people, create our jobs, five seconds. And when we do business in Lexington County, we ought to look at our local businesses first to give them an opportunity to first get the business and then go outside. But we should give it here locally. Create an economy within an economy. I'm Scott Adams. I know most of you, uh, a good number of you know my wife, a Lexington small business person, and I uh, appreciate the opportunity to be here. The focus of my campaign is on creating a climate to foster job creation and business opportunities within our county, just as Daryl mentioned, maintaining essential and necessary public services, and advocate common sense spending policies that keep taxes low and, where possible and practical, a develop spending policies that keep Lexington dollars in Lexington. I believe our county budget must be realistic as to anticipated revenues and responsive to citizen needs and the federal and state budget mandates that we have to provide for. Moreover, revenues which have been collected to support a particular budget line should be spent as budgeted with any change clearly and openly justified. In short, we must budget responsibly tax equitably, and spend with accountability. My involvement with the Chamber, my work on local economic development initiatives, which is responsible for thousands of jobs, my work with small and large businesses throughout Lexington County in the past several years, including my wife's small business, has convinced me that we need a smart, practical, and coordinated approach to our county's economic development plans, and a growth and development plan that respects personal property rights while recognizing, appreciating, and planning for the growth that is occurring and will continue to occur. We are going to have growth. We have to plan for it. We have to be responsible. If we don't do it, we can, we can look to Northeast uh, Richland to see uh, zoning and planning that has gone awry. I am committed to fiscal integrity, the principles of smaller government, limited regulation of business, individual rights, and low taxes, which are the very pillars of this party. I will insist on operational transparency and how the county does business. Here is where the rubber meets the road. Together, we will sustain and further the con conservative principles, family values, quality of life that, had that have made Lexington County the wonderful place to live, work, play, and pray. Thank you. Jim 
Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Jim Kynard. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm originally from Charleston. I've been in Lexington County for 25 years now. I uh, live down in the uh, Fort Smith area of Lexington County. I uh, represent the south uh, southeastern end of Lexington County. Everything from Gaston all the way through Swansea over to Pelion. Uh, uh, mostly the rural area of, of Lexington County. Um, the last three years I have served as vice chairman and then two years prior as chairman. Uh, this year I'm just a normal council member. So I'm getting a little bit of a break. But uh, my, uh, my uh, day job, I guess, I am a banker. I'm very much a numbers person. Started my banking career with, uh, as you all probably know, Lexington State Bank. Um, worked under Mr. Raymond, and uh, that's where I got my training. That's why I, uh, I'm very much a numbers person and very much a uh, conservative. Uh, if it doesn't make sense numerically, it's not right. So uh, that's uh, the way I look at things. Um, yeah, my voting record, uh, I think I'm one of the more conservative folks on council, and uh, that, that just comes with being a banker uh, and my background. I've uh, been married for 30 years. Uh, again, I've uh, been going to church and living in the area for uh, the whole time I've been down in Lexington County in the, uh, in the horse egg. So um, that's about it. I'm a little bit soon, but I'm pretty short and straight and to the point. So thank you all. Good evening. I'm Jim Ekstrom, the county treasurer. I am committed to limited <coughs> government and less government spending. As an example, in my four and a half years in office, I've reduced my staff from 23 to 18 as I have maintained and increased uh, taxpayer services while at the same time I've decreased spending, which should make for lower taxes. Uh, I humbly ask for your vote and support, and I pledge to you four more years of savings and efficiency. Thank you so very much. Debbie Gunner, Register of Deeds for Lexington County. I've been your Register of Deeds for 15 years. See office for anybody that doesn't know that where all your <coughs> land records are recorded and maintained. Um, some of the things I've accomplished in my 15 years that I'm very proud of is I've implemented technology to reduce budget expenditures. Um, one example is going from an outside uh, computer uh, vendor for our records management system that cost the county 150000 a year to an in-house, homegrown, self-maintained computer system saved hundreds of thousands of dollars over the years. So um, I'm very proud of that. Um, I, like Jim, have used technology to reduce staff by two in 15 years. <clears throat> Just doing more with less. Um, I was one of the first in the state to make Lexington County's uh, land records available over the internet. Very proud of that. Um, I have implemented recently electronic recording. Uh, this is a great uh, uh, technological advancement that allows uh, attorneys to save a lot of time and money. Um, it's a green initiative, no paper. Um, and I was one of the first in the state to initiate this as well. Um, another thing that I'm very proud of is I have established a team player 
uh, relationship with county council, administration, <coughs> and across department lines. This has been very, very important. I feel I'm best qualified for this position as I'm a proven leader, a good steward of taxpayer dollars. I can lead, lead in a conscientious uh, manner, and I understand the laws of South Carolina as they apply to real estate. This is going to be very important. Um, I'd be honored to have your vote on June 12th. Thank you. Register of Deeds. I'm envious of all of those of you without notes. I like my notes. I'm a list maker and note taker. I have uh, worked in the Lexington ROD for 12 years. My job is a title abstractor. Um, in case you don't know what that is, is I do the title research for real estate attorneys, closing attorneys. And everything in that office is imperative to my way of life and my living. Having been there every day, for 10 years, I have worked side by side with the other people that use the office, the appraisers, the realtors, the surveyors, uh, paralegals, realtors, attorneys. I understand their needs. I've listened to them, I've heard them, and I understand what changes they would like to see made. And I feel like I have the absolute ability to, to implement some of these changes. One of the biggest things I would like to do is to expand that online system to make it complete uh, the records there date back to the 1800s. We may not need to research them back that far, but the records at this point online start in 1998. I'd like to see them fully online for the public use. The other main thing that needs to be done is these records are our history. They represent all the growth in Lexington County and your parents and grandparents and your family's deeds and you know everything that's happened with the land here. The records are have been used so much that there's damage. One of the things I'd like to do is repair the damage to the existing, existing records as well as expand the online system. The other thing that I can say about the ROD is the staff there is, is fantastic. I work with them every day. I feel like I have the ability to manage them. Um, I know it will be a challenge to go into a new office, but I make no I have no qualms about being able to manage these people and I'll expect nothing less from them than I do with myself, which is to do the best of my ability at my job regardless of circumstance. I will be present and available to the public when they come in. I will be on the floor. You'll see me in the office. I'll be accountable to the taxpayers for my time and how and where their money is spent. So I appreciate your time. Uh, we do have a website, voteaprilmcivor.com. Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, my fellow Republicans, the question is, can coroners save lives? Well, in December, shortly before Christmas, I posted a help number. A man by the name of Bill wrote a note to me. He said, I'm glad to have this number. He said, I might need it. So I wrote him back and I said, what's going on with you? He wrote me back and said, I lost my job, lost my home, lost my car. I said, would you give me your phone number? He did, and I called him. He said, I have $80 a week. My rental car is about to be taken. I'm about to be put out of my apartment now in the street. He said, I have nothing to live for. I'm going to blow my brains out. I said, Bill, will you give me time to help you? He said, I'll give you a little bit of time. I said, will you? Give me, promise me you won't hurt yourself before tomorrow night, 24 hours. He said, I give you my word. I said, you will hear from me, but if for some reason you don't, you call me tomorrow night. I called a friend of mine. I said, I need to have lunch with you. He came. We had lunch. 
I said, Cliff, this is the story. Cliff got in his car, drove two and a half hours to Myrtle Beach. The next day, he took this man out for lunch, filled his car with gas, gave him $100, brought his resume to me. I called the coroner in that county, Horry County, Robert Edge. I said, Robert, can you help me? Any jobs in your county? He said, the hospital, they're looking for people. We went to work for this man, and my friend actually bought him a car. <coughs> he went down there several times to help him. This man's now earning close to $70,000 a year down in, in uh, Atlanta. Over in Horry County in 1994, Coroner Horton Shula called me and said, Frank, I just had a major collision over here that killed many people. It's been going on in this intersection for decades. Can you help me? I made one phone call. Two weeks later, there was a flashing light there. Last week, Coroner Donnie Porth said, no one has died in that intersection since 1994. I can tell you these stories all night. I have a file this thick. Can coroners save lives? You better believe coroners should be saving lives. Are they saving lives? It's up to you. I'll give you eight years of my life maximum. That's it, if you want me. Thank you. Thank you. I got a call from Coroner Harry Harmon at a last minute conflict and has asked me to read a brief statement. And I quote, as everyone is aware, I recently had back surgery and am completely on schedule with the recuperation and therapy. Since January of 1977, I have been your coroner. I've done my best to serve the people of Lexington County in an open, honest, and yes, a comforting manner. That's what we do in our county. That's why we call it service. I am running again and earnestly ask for your support and your vote on Tuesday, June the 12th. Thanking you for your letting me be your friend and your corner for 35 years. Sincerely, Harry O. Harmon, Jr. And I have two phone numbers if you'd, need, if you'd like to call and offer your help. 359-8439 and 260-4995. And if you have a chance to write it down, I'll be around and be glad to give it to you. Thank you. Okay, clerk of court, uh, Mike Blakely, Beth Carrick, Suzanne Moore, Tommy Windsor. Thank you all for letting me be here tonight. My name is Tommy Windsor and I'm a candidate for clerk of court. I have uh, been in this room and in that adjacent room many times because for four years I've served as chairman of the Lexington County Republican Party and I see many former chairmen sitting here in this audience and as, as they know, that is a very tough job, ladies and gentlemen. It is like hurting cats sometimes presiding over these type meetings. So, you know, I, I give kudos and my hats off to these gentlemen who have served as former party chairman. But when people ask me why I'm running for clerk of court, I have two simple reasons. First of all, I want to cut waste and inefficiency in government and apply the conservative ideals that I learned from some of the people sitting in this room here tonight since I was 15 years old, working as a Republican since I was 15. And the second thing as to why I'm running for county uh, clerk of court is because you as taxpayers deserve better from your elected leaders. You deserve better from your elected leaders. Three things I want to do. I want to do a lot of stuff, but three things I'll go over. First of all, all public records that you can look at at the courthouse, in the clerk's office, they need to be online. Why aren't they? Charleston County has them online. Why can't Lexington County? We need to do that. That's one step in making government more efficient and friendly to taxpayers is making records that they have a right to look at more accessible to them. I'm going to put the clerk's budget and checkbook online on the clerk's website so that you can see every day how has the clerk of court spent the money that we as taxpayers
taxpayers have given it. And third, my daily schedule and my calendar will be posted online so that you will be able to see what your clerk of court is doing. You deserve nothing less than the best from your elected officials. I would appreciate your support on June the 12th, and I'll be around to answer any questions. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Mitch. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Dr. James R. Metz. Uh, he actually got the building open for us. Somehow it got rescheduled for tomorrow night. But we got here early and we had it changed back to tonight. But anyway, thanks to Dr. James R. Metz and for all his work with the RAC committee that we've established. And thanks to all the volunteers again for filing and for all the people running for office. And Rich, I promise you, next event I'll be at the next one. I've got City Case Council meeting tomorrow night, which conflict. I love barbecue. I'd be there for you. But anyone running for office, if you call me for a kickoff event, I'll, I'll treat everyone the same. I'll publicize it. I'll try to be there for you. Just let me know ahead of time. So good night. Thanks for being here tonight, folks. Good job.